talk about it so much. It is the ultimate director for sales and it codes for your traits. It's a major component of what makes you, you. When you have a really important molecule like DNA that is ultimately responsible for controlling the cell, it would make sense that when you make another cell, like in mitosis, you would also have to get more DNA into that cell. And that introduces our topic of DNA replication, which means making more DNA. First, let's talk about where and when. First, where. It occurs in the nucleus, if the cell has a nucleus. Remember, not all cells have a nucleus. This video clip is actually going to focus on the types of cells that do have a nucleus. They're known as eukaryote cells. Prokaryotes, which are cells that do not have a nucleus, they do things a little differently. They also do DNA replication, but that is not going to be our focus for this clip. Next, when. When does this happen? Well, this typically happens during a stage known as interphase. Interphase is when a cell is growing, it's carrying out cell processes, and it's replicating its DNA. You know what it's not doing at the exact same time? Dividing. You don't want a cell to be replicating DNA and dividing at the same time. That's a little bit too much multitasking. So DNA replication does not happen during cell division, otherwise known as mitosis. In fact, cells replicate their DNA before division processes like mitosis and meiosis. Because once you make the new cell, you better have DNA to put in there. I think DNA replication would actually make a great video game. It's actually quite exciting. Really, I'm nigga? I'm going to introduce the key players in DNA replication so that you can get some background information. Now, the majority of these key players that I'm going to introduce are enzymes. In biology, when you see something end in ASE, you might want to check as it's very possible that it may be an enzyme. Enzymes have the ability to speed up reactions and build up or break down the items that they act on. So here we go with our key players. First, helicase. This is the unzipping enzyme. If you recall that DNA has two strands, you can think of helicase as unzipping the two strands of DNA. Helicase doesn't have a hard time doing that. DNA polymerase, the builder. This enzyme replicates DNA molecules to actually build a new strand of DNA. Primase, the initializer. With as great as DNA polymerase is, poor DNA polymerase can't figure out where to get started without something called a primer. Primase makes the primer so that DNA polymerase can figure out where to go to start to work. You know what's kind of interesting about the primer that it makes? It's actually a piece of RNA. Ligase, the gluer. It helps glue DNA fragments together. More about why you would need that a little later. Now don't feel overwhelmed. We'll go over this sequence in order. Please keep in mind that like all of our videos, we tend to give the big picture, but there is always more detail to every biological process we cover. That's really true for DNA replication. DNA replication starts at a certain part called the origin. Usually this part is identified by certain DNA sequences. There can be multiple origins within the DNA. At the origin, helicase, the unzipping enzyme, comes in and unwinds, unzips, the DNA. SSB proteins, that stands for single-stranded binding proteins, bind to the DNA strands and they keep them separated. Primase comes in and makes RNA primers on both strands. Now remember, that's really important because otherwise when DNA polymerase comes in, it, it wouldn't know where to start. Now DNA polymerase can get to work. Remember, it's the important enzyme that adds DNA bases. Now you have two strands, right? They're not identical. Remember, they complement each other. They also are anti-parallel, so that means they don't really go in the same direction. With DNA, we don't say a strand goes north or south. The directions for the DNA strands are a little different. We say that DNA either goes 5' prime to 3' prime or 3' prime to 5'. Prime. This can seem very confusing. What in the world does that mean? Well, the sugar of DNA is part of the backbone of DNA. It has carbons. The carbons on the sugar are numbered right after the oxygen in a clockwise direction. 
one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, and five prime. The five prime carbon is actually outside of the ring structure. Now you do the same thing for the other side, but keep in mind this strand is flipped just because DNA strands are anti-parallel to each other. So let's count these. Again, clockwise from the oxygen, one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, five prime. And the five prime is out of the ring. This strand on the left runs five prime to three prime. And the strand on the right here runs three prime to five prime. Well, it turns out that DNA polymerase can only work in the five prime to three prime direction. So the strand that runs five prime to three prime is fine. It's called the leading strand. But the other strand will make it a little tricky. DNA polymerase can only go in the five prime to three prime direction. So RNA primase, it has to set a lot of extra primers down to do that, as shown here. It takes longer too. This strand is called the lagging strand, which is pretty fitting. On the lagging strand, you tend to get these little fragments of synthesized DNA. They're called Okazaki fragments. Amazing name. The primers have to get replaced with DNA bases since the primers were made of RNA. Ligase, remember that's the gluing enzyme as I like to nickname it, has to take care of the gaps in the Okazaki fragments. Now at the end, you have two identical double helix DNA molecules from your one original double helix DNA molecule. We call this semi-conservative replication because the two copies each contain one old original strand and one newly made one. Oh, one last thing. Surely you have had to proofread your work before to catch errors. Well, you definitely don't want DNA polymerase to make an error. If it makes the wrong DNA base, then you could have an incorrectly coded gene, which could ultimately end up in an incorrect protein or no protein. DNA polymerase is just awesome. It has proofreading ability, which means it rarely makes mistakes. And that's a good thing. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. Music